Today, I'm believing that God just reaches through the screen, reaches through the device, gives you a good shake and says, hey, I'm here and I want to be on fire today for the Lord. God is so good, so faithful. It's hope today. I'm Amy, I'm here with Tom and Sydney. We've got some important stuff to talk about today. Yeah, we do have some very important conversations that we're going to have. And, you know, coming up on Hope Today in just a moment, the young Christian EMT in Israel who has made headlines for serving as a bridge between Christians, Muslims, and Jews in Israel. Yasmin Mizwawi will share how God inspired her after a life-changing trip to educate those in her country about the horrors of the Holocaust. It's something you don't want to miss. She's such a young and inspiring young woman. And speaking of catastrophic events that have happened in history, we do want to take a moment just to pause and talk about, you know, one of the deadliest wildfires that happened in history in Maui. We know that we have been bombarded here in America, just hearing about the devastation that has happened there. You know, more than 100 people have died. There's thousands that are like missing and unaccounted for. And I know our heart is truly breaking. And so we just wanted to take a moment on hope today just to talk about ways that we can, Amy, help out. You know, you know I, I just one of the things I just heard today was about a, a, a mother and their kids who actually went out in, into the ocean. I mean, the fire was raging like right up against mm -hmm. the beach out into the ocean to uh, to protect themselves. And they were rescued out there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we do want to pray. We also want to, uh, you know, offer you opportunities to uh, partner. I know, Amy, you were mm -hmm. just uh, researching some things that uh, can we can do. Yeah, I mean, because there, there's families left without homes, without food, without beds, without clothing. There's total devastation. And, you know, it's like, what do you do? I, how, can I, how can I reach out and support? So Pastor Greg Laurie, uh, you probably heard of a story through the movie, The Jesus Revolution. They actually have a church, and it, that church is called Harvest Kumalami in Maui. And they are resourcing and helping, and they are like boots on the ground there. If you want to go and search him, search the church, and um, it's just a way to get involved. And also, guys, not just Maui, but also here in Plum, Pennsylvania, there was an explosion at a home at, that spilled over into other homes. Several have been left dead. I know that they are directly connected to people in our church. It was an employer, it was a boss, it was a good friend. And uh, so, you know, what, what can we do? First of all, we can pray, we know that. But also the families practically need uh, food, clothing. So what we're doing is we're gathering gift cards for the families from Giant Eagle, restaurants, Dick's, right. Macy's, whatever, Marshall's, uh, so they can go get what they need. You can take those donations to our church at Grace Life Church right there on William Penn Highway. We're gathering that, or also you could take it to Plum Borough and they will distribute it to all of the families in need. It's so important for us to take steps. And we wanna pray and we're gonna pray in just a moment here, but we need to take steps. Just a, a, a quick search of my own before uh, the program here. I know that uh, Mercy Chefs uh, that we've partnered with for many years, uh, they are accepting donations and they are on the ground there. Uh, YWAM has its uh, headquarters in Hawaii and the, there is a team that is gathering items and gathering things to minister there as well. So there are many ways to, uh, to help. Uh, you can find those ways. I'm sure if you looked uh, on some of the other ones like Convoy of Hope and uh, um, uh, uh, Samaritan's Purse, you will find other ways that you can help as well. So there's things that we can do, but guys, let's pray together right now about this situation and also the one in Plum. Yes. Father, we come before you and we ask, Lord, that you would just minister to the people in Hawaii right now, Father. I pray, Lord God, I pray first of all for a stop to the fires, Lord, that, that everything would stop and, and cease. Uh, that the burning would cease, Father. I pray, Lord God, then that you would uh, uh, just give people their lives back, Lord God. I know so many have been lost, and I pray for the families, Lord, that will be uh, suffering and hurting. And I pray for the, the Church of Jesus Christ to respond with love and with uh, the, 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 the provision that the people need, Lord. And I pray for the rebuilding efforts, Lord, that all things will do, be done properly, Lord, and all things will be done in a, in a way that will bless those families the most, Lord. So we pray, Father, send your people 
and, and send those that will bring about uh, the, uh, the healing there. And Lord, even for our own situation here in the Pittsburgh area in Plumborough, Father, we pray for that family and the other families that were affected. And Lord, we ask God that you would bring healing, bring peace, bring provision in those moments to your glory, Lord, and help us to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, as you can see, the theme of our show today is really just there's a lot of crises that are happening in our world, but we as Christians, we are called to be the light. And speaking of the light, there's a young Christian woman from Israel who's using her passion for people and the medical profession in a very unique way. Yasmin Mizwawi is a, a volunteer paramedic from Again David Adam, Israel's National Emergency Medical and Blood Services Organization. And during her time with the organization, she had a chance to go on a trip that changed her life forever and inspired her to become a bridge between Christians and Muslims to help them understand the horrors of the Holocaust. Yasmin is joining us live today. She's actually in Germany to share her, us with her journey. Yasmin, we're so glad to have you with us today. Thank you, I'm happy to be with you today. So Yasmin, tell us a little bit about your upbringing in Israel because it's so truly fascinating like what God is doing through your life. Yeah, so I grew up in a Christian home to a wonderful and supportive family um, in Israel. I was raised on these values as an example of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as an example of His love. We grew up on values of loving the other, accepting the other, no matter gender, color, race, religion, or even language. We grew up on giving the other the community without waiting for any return. That's like truly beautiful that your parents instilled this passion to love people, having the compassion of Christ. And tell us a little bit about how you journeyed into this organization that is truly on the front lines in Israel. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. I started volunteering at Magan David Adom since I was 15 years old as a young volunteer. Uh, I did my national service here for two years as a paramedic uh, at the age of 18. Although I am a student now, but I still volunteer at the age of 24. And being here in Israel, um, you know, usually wherever there is diversity, there is tension. But I think it, Israel is a wonderful and diverse country. Um, people here appreciate life. Um, there is always tension, but Christianity is values based on love. Um, life is sacred, is, is a value we need to look at. And that's exactly what I found at Magen David Adom. We sacred life. And as a Christian following Christ's teachings of love, forgiveness, and peace, it becomes even much more important. It's not always easy, especially when there is a tension, but choosing this path helps me find hope and a way to connect with others. Even when things are a bit hard, it reminds me to look for understanding and unity um, rather than division. I love that as just really being a bridge of hope to people, no matter their background, what they're going through. But you've had some experiences of being on the front lines in medical emergencies. Can you tell us about some of your experiences? Of course, um, you know, volunteering at McGinn David Dom um, is it. It is. I work with diverse um, teams, diverse people from all over the country. Um, and we do come to many emergency cases to people that are also diverse. We don't know where they are from, where they are coming from, what is their background. We come to their even very um, hard situation, to the very um, intimate places, their homes, their kitchen, their living room. and. Our work is just so great and we are blessed to do this uh, work and um, and this is the goal that we share at the end of the day, saving lives. This is our main goal. And Yasmin, can you just share with us like a story that really stands out when you were just had to save a life? Of course, and thank you for asking this question. I actually, um, there is a story that I will never forget and I always love to share that has a lot of meaning behind. And it was on one rainy day, uh, we received a call from the calling center uh, for an emergency case. My team and I arrived to the place. We diagnosed an uh, emergency case um, of uh, 
two week year old baby. Um, we diagnosed the CPR. Um, I had to manage the case, the treatment, my team and the baby's family all at once. Um, I held a universe of emotions that I had to keep on the side and stay focused and professional. I prayed deep inside uh, my heart, our Heavenly Father, to give me the power and the wisdom to handle this case. Finally, we were able to stabilize the baby and transfer him to a hospital for further care. Uh, before we left, I took a moment and talked to the baby's mother. We prayed, even though her faith and religion is different than mine, but I think it doesn't matter. God is our Heavenly Father. He looks at our hearts. He knows us, us as His children, every single one of us, without exceptions. And a year after, also, although the cold weather outside, I received a message that warmed my heart, a picture of the baby celebrating a one-year birthday, oh. a testament to hope, faith, and the healing power of love. And this is the heart and soul of Megan David Adam, a beacon of hope and a testament to humanity's capacity for compassion and resilience. This is Megan David Adam that we are proud of. Well, that's such a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that of just how you're able to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And Yasmin, can you just tell us though, you had an opportunity to go to Poland that really opened your eyes and inspired you to do something truly incredible to serve as a bridge between Christians and Muslims and to bring even greater unity in your country. Can you tell us about it? Of course. So it actually all started um, during my volunteering at Magen Davide Dom, you know, Magen Davide Dom is diverse. I work with people from diverse background. I went, I wanted to know more about the other, not only to hear about them, about people, about stereotypes. They are my teammates, my neighbors. And I had to break this window that is made out of glass where we hear each other, but not really talk to one another. And I made this decision and went to Auschwitz with MDA delegation of youth volunteers to learn more and spread the awareness of the story so the history won't repeat itself. That's truly beautiful. So can you tell specific ways that you are doing that, the ways that you've even seen just bringing people together, how it's opened their eyes and has changed them? Of course. I unfortunately, when I came back to Israel, I received a very hard um, response from my community and children my age um, and a social campaign against me. But for courage, I always say there is a price tag, even though it hurts in the beginning. But um, if we treat the wound properly, it heals. And I saw this a red light and felt a huge need to bridge the gaps in my community. Uh, and what a better way to start with myself um, then I decided to talk to young people starting in my school uh, to encourage them to come and volunteer at Magen David Adom uh, I shared with them the story of the Holocaust um, everything I saw and felt during my trip uh, NGOs and presentations across the country I visited uh, Arab and Jewish schools um, across the country and shared the story I wanted to spread the love um, the respect and mainly the acceptance that we need to give to one another. You know, that's truly beautiful, Yasmin. And I don't know if you know here in Pittsburgh where we are, we have a very large Jewish community called Squirrel Hill. And so we know how important it is for us to be a bridge to show love to one another because we know with the Holocaust, it's just so much the horrors that happen, but how important it is that we are there for one another. And so, Yasmin, you know, you have a really unique position. You're a young person. You're in your 20s living, you know, having the opportunity of living in your country, your home country of Israel. We hear so much of what's going on in Israel, the turmoil, the pain, living in a constant war zone. What would you say to us, like um, to share with our viewers, for us to have understanding of what it is to be in Israel as a young person and what are some ways that we can pray and to support you? Yeah, um, as I mentioned before, there is always tension, but I would like to say that our Heavenly Father is much greater than this and he's with with us we are his children um 
even though it's hard situation here, but you know, at the beginning of the dome, we look at everyone as equal. When we come to emergency cases, we never ask who are you or or should we do this and that because you are no, we are all equal. And these values we share to get together um, at Megan David Adam. Um, but Israel is wonderful, and you're most welcome to visit. Yeah, we would we would love to do it, and you know, love to visit. I know Amy has been there like recently, and then you know, Tom, have you ever been to Israel? I have not. Yeah, so we definitely we definitely love to come to Israel, and I know it's like. <laughs> and just to wrap up for time, I just want to say congratulations to you because you recently got your master's. You're studying in school in Germany. So, what are your plans for the future? So uh, now I'm doing my thesis. I just finished a master's in management and data analytics, uh, preparing for my PhD. Um, with Megan David Adam, I always love to say this, I will never leave. I will stay here, I will volunteer, uh, and I'll keep my studies for work and as a paramedic only for volunteering. Well, that is truly awesome. You know, Yasmin, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your passion with MDA. And we just pray blessings over you. And just think of that scripture as blessed are the peacemakers because they are the sons and daughter of God. And that is truly what you're walking in. And it's truly remarkable for you being in your 20s as young. And, you know, we know that God has a bright future ahead for you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Yasmin. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to hear more about us, about MDA or for donations, you can visit our website savinglivesinisrael.org. And thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. We will take a quick break and we will be right back because we're going to take a moment to really speak into your heart, speak into your spirit and uplift you so that you know the greatest hope of all is in Jesus. We'll be right back. No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher, Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Find airtimes for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. What a powerful conversation we had with Yasmin and all that, uh, that uh, she sees and all that she has been through at a very young age. But uh, God is with her and he is with you too. And he was with someone in the Old Testament named Abraham. In fact, let's go to a scripture right now. Genesis 12, 3 from the New International Version. It says this, I will bless those who bless you and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was Abraham, and he's, he's getting uh, called by God to just go places, you know? I mean, guys, think about this. Just leave everything that he knows, everything that he has uh, ever, uh, you know, family, his farm, everything, just go and go to this other place. Uh, and to hear that word from God, that I'll be with you, and anyone who blesses you is going to be blessed. What, what are you, what's your thoughts on that scripture? Well, there's a couple of thoughts because um, being there in Israel and you're, you're driving through, you're going to Nazareth where Yasmin was from, you know, Bethlehem, all over Galilee. And they're going, this area here is the tribe of Benjamin. This area here is the tribe of Judah. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, this, this really happened. God yep. had a promise to a man that I will. At this point, Abraham did not have a son. He did not have a legacy. He did not have a nation. He had to believe by faith that this word he had from the Lord, 
that God would fulfill it and that God was faithful to his promises. You know, take that to modern day, just my simple, tiny, little, minute life. You know, God said to me in 2000, or 1997, Pittsburgh, and I left everything. I left it, I left my family, home, people, and I moved to a land. And I believed the promises of God and sitting today with, with a church and a rich family and a rich life because God is faithful to his promise. So I know today you might be, be believing for something. You might be struggling through something. God might have promised you something in his word. And can I just say, by faith, hang on. By faith, receive the promises of God for your life because he wants to bring a rush of healing, joy, peace, life into your home. You know, I'm so glad that you brought it up that like about the promises of God's word, because honestly, this morning when I woke up, God spoke to me Psalm 138. So sometimes I don't know if this happens to you that you wake up and God just like drops something in your spirit, drops a scripture in your heart. And he said Psalm 138 and I started reading through and there's a passage and I don't have my phone on me. And I know it's in verse two in Psalm 38, but it talks about how the, that his pro, his word is like above like his, his name. I mean, his names and it's speaking about his promise. It's speaking about that God. God, the way that he proves himself to us, that he shows up in mighty and, might, and mighty, he's mighty and powerful. Sorry, I'm getting a little tongue twisted <laughs> with my words thinking about this because I'm like really excited about this because it's just happened to me this morning is that God, if you think about it, it's about his word. And then you think about Jesus is the word that became flesh. The word that became flesh is the promise that is to us and the promises that he speaks over our lives. That is what we stand on. I mean, we're talking about Abraham. Can you imagine like God gives you a word and like you're with your wife and you don't get pregnant for years. I mean, all these things that we have to stand on his word, these things that are like impossible. But you know, even in my life right now, even this morning when I was like sitting and talking to God this morning, I just had this whole revelation about his promises and about his word. It's like his jurisdiction, like he cannot go be beyond his word. <laughs> the word is like the Supreme Court. He's the King of Kings. And it's like, you can't go above the law. You can't go above the word. That is what God is saying to us. <laughs> so when you read the word that's in the Bible and you apply it to your life, that's what God's promise. He is a faithful God. He is the God of covenant. Sometimes it's just overwhelming to think about. I think our minds, our finite man, minds can't even conceive and comprehend even when he says those things to us. But we just want you to hold on to hope today that no matter what crises you're walking through, no matter what things you're enduring and you're going through, that God has a word for you and you hold on that and you stand on that. Mm -hmm. And no matter what's being shaken, no matter what's being torn or ripped apart, no matter in the places that you are being displaced, maybe spiritually or physically or whatever it may be, that there's a word, there's a promise for your life that God wants you to hold on today. So if you even need an extra dose of hope and you're like, you know what, I need something, a good power, there's power and agreement, give us a call at our prayer, prayer, prayer line at 888-665-4483. You know, I just, I just love it that Amy left her homeland and went to the promised land of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. a land flowing with yeah. milk, milk and, and honey, honey and french fries exactly. and football. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's the promised land. But, you know, there's another part of this too. Because in Galatians, it says that on, that it says, on. therefore, be sure that those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. That's and it right. says this, it says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, all the nations shall be blessed in you. That's you, that's me. Right. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham, the believer. So it goes beyond just Abraham's promise. Do you know that when you follow God, there's things that break out beyond yourself. There are things that when you take a step of obedience, yes, you're blessed. Your family's blessed. But then all the families around you are blessed. All the people around you are blessed because the word of God goes out. So have you, have you become one of those children of Abraham? Have you become not, not children after the flesh, but after the spirit, after the word of God? that when all the people, all the families of the earth shall be blessed, it's through Abraham and his faith yes. that he walked that out. Tom, you are about to preach right there. <laughs> I'm telling you what, 
we're blessed today because of Abraham's faith and Abraham believing those things which he could not see. He couldn't see it, yet he believed. Maybe you're believing for your child, your, your daughter, your son, and you don't see it yet, but by faith, you say, all of my children are taught of the Lord and great will be their peace in Jesus' name. That's what we do. And, you know, I, I was thinking about this whole world uh, word bless. You know, does God want to bless you? Does God want to bless me? And I had a conversation with a group of teenagers. There's always teenagers at the house because, you know, my, my sons are teenagers. And they were talking about, you know, does God want to bless you? Just based on this promise alone, God wants to bless you. Not with something that's going to hurt you. And, and there's other things like, am I a good steward of what he's already blessed me with so that I can handle more? But just to know, know today, does God want to bless me? Yes. A billion times, yes. I will bless those who bless you and all of the peoples of the earth will be blessed because if, if you're in Christ, then you are a blessed son and daughter of God. So I'm praying today that God wrecks you today, that he, that there's no more plateau of this, I'm stuck, I'm staying the same, I'm hitting a lid, I'm in a box. I believe today that God wants to bust you out of the box. I believe that God today wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask. Blessed in your relationships, blessed in your being, blessed in your mind, blessed in your heart. It's not just about things. It's like I'm there there's blessing in me. I'm just I'm blessed by God. God's hand is on your life today. If you have never made a firm sure decision to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Today is your day. Get in the blessings of God on your life. You've been trying to do it in your own ability. It's not working. You're frustrated. You're angry. You're bad. Do it God's way. God's way. There's blessings and favor and abundance and wisdom. Give us a call today at 888-665-4483. Pray with our prayer partners and let's see God work in your life. Let's see him wreck you for good. And I believe the blessing and favor of God is going to come on your family today. We'll see you tomorrow. On tomorrow's Hope Today, offering help and understanding to those caught in the grip of addiction. Author Andy Partington provides encouragement to those struggling with addiction as he offers a plan of hope and healing that can be found through Jesus. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.